but essentially they have a new fragrance coming out um the, uh, to a whole different level so Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm literally just popping out to go towards the train station today um, because I am going to be doing a vlog in Leeds. Leeds is like a huge city up north if you guys are from America. So the main cities being like Manchester, Leeds, London, etc, etc. So there's lots of um, different choices. Unfortunately, Leeds doesn't have the best choices in the world, um, maybe not as much as London or Manchester, but nonetheless, I am going to be going to Harvey Nicks, which if you guys know, Harvey Nichols is like a luxury department store similar to a Harrods or a Selfridges, maybe even more premium actually than Selfridges. And it should have a variety of different niche fragrances, luxury designer. So I'm really looking forward to that. Then also in the city centre, I believe they have a Pentalagon store. There is one particular fragrance that I've been meaning to try, which I didn't get to try in my York vlog. It's called Alula. I think it's one of their newest releases. Apparently it's like a plum, ambery, smoky type of fragrance, which I'm really looking forward to trying. So I'm going to take you guys along with me. I'm just going to check the time. Okay, I'm still okay. <laughs> um, as I said, it is a little bit awkward filming in public. So probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a pan shot of, you know, the fragrances that are on offer and then probably do like an audio on the top. I do have a microphone this time, so I'm hoping that the audio is a little bit better. I did take on board your feedback last time, guys, about the audio, so I'm really hoping that the quality will be much better this time. And I'm sorry if I look a bit crazy, by the way. Usually whenever I like curl or wave my hair, I let it like still be quite ringlety. So by the time the end of the video comes along, you'll just be pin straight. And yeah, I just really hope that you guys enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe because it massively helps. And I'll see you guys in Leeds. Right, so here I'm enjoying my Costa coffee and the hideous view outside the window. Um, I was just at a normal train station, so it wasn't the best views. Um, but it was really nice and relaxing. So from where I was to Leeds train station, it took me maybe roughly an hour's time to get there which in the grand scheme of things isn't too bad. So here it's a little bit nicer view view wise with some rolling fields, some greenery, just saying hello here in the bathroom, just a quick pit stop. So Leeds in of itself is a very historic city. Unfortunately, there is a lot of building work going on at the moment, so you can't really see everything in full view. And this is the Harvey Nichols store. Everything is kind of in the same theme. So here I was just starting with MFK. A lot of great different selections. I was looking to initially try Apom, which is that new fragrance. It used to be Apom Pour Femme and Apom Pour Homme. But unfor well, fortunately or unfortunately, whichever way you see, they have discontinued those. And they will be launching a unisex version, which wasn't here. 724 I've always really enjoyed. I think it's a really beautiful, fresh, citrusy, almost leaning a little bit green, musky type of fragrance. And as we transition along, we visited Chanel. And here you can see the Comet, which is the newest release from Chanel. And I will be talking about that a little bit later on. Gold Film and Banks actually had some really great choices. I did try Mystic Bliss and I will give you guys a bit more of a review towards the end of the video. That's an exclusive for Harvey Nichols. And you can see here Fragrance de Bois. A lot of them were just like the best-selling fragrances. So Cyrene, Oud Jaune Intense, Oud Orange Intense. You had a bit of Zerzhov, but unfortunately not the full selection. At least just the best sellers like Naxos, um, Echento Overdose, etc. And as you can see when we pan across, you have Anissio Parfums, Parfums de Mali, and we all just keep going up. And here you have Mathieu Premier, which I reviewed one of them towards the end of the video, which, which is the Santal Astral. Typically, people go for the Crystal Saffron Vanilla Powder. Those seem to be the most uh, popular out of their range, but I do also enjoy Anson Suave. And you have here Juliet Has a Gun, a really great niche, well, niche designer ish kind of house. Um, so Mason Crivelli 
had some fantastic choices. A lot of you guys said for me to try Iris Malakan, if that's how you pronounce it. And here you could probably see me just trying Lee Soloberg. This was a really nice surprise considering it's like a fruity, floral, woody fragrance. Maison Cire has some really great choices as well. I find that their Oud um, offerings are really beautiful considering they're a little bit more westernized and they're just a little bit easier to wear. Here we have House of Oud um, alongside Nishane to the left. And as you can see, I'm just panning across the entire selection. This is just one part of Harvey Nichols, by the way. There are like separate parts within the store um, of just the niche offerings that they have of fragrances. And you can still see here Jeroboam. And towards the top, my most favorite brand at the moment, which is Ella K. I did try to have a little bit of a wonder around like the fashion bit, but there wasn't really much to see, to be honest. And as you go around in Leeds, there's some really beautiful historical parts. So there's this almost like um, shopping district part, which as you walk in, it has all of the original Victorian-esque type of uh, design just all over the roof. Uh, the mouldings are really beautiful. And within this district part, I guess you do have Penhaligons. And the Penhaligon store in Leeds is just incredible it has the most amazing selection all of the portraits collection um as well as the other collections of course and you can probably see here just the overall presentation of the store is immaculate you have so many beautiful designs and themes going on and to be honest, I mean, Mr. Thompson has always been a favourite of mine, but you also have Bewitching Yasmin, as well as the other portraits, um, Mr. Sam, etc. And, you know, for somebody kind of trying Penhaligons for the first time, I think it's great that they have almost like this Ferris wheel of perfumes in the centre. So it just allows you to try things a bit easier. You have a really great sales consultant there, who will always help you and guide you. I find the sales consultants in Penhaligons tend to be a little bit more educated when it comes to fragrances and they have a better knowledge in comparison to maybe other sales consultants out there. And this is me carrying on. I did do a little bit of shopping in Reese because I thought I might as well just do a little pit stop. And this is when, sadly, I had to make my way home, just making my way onto the train back from Leeds. And, you know, the journey was great. It wasn't long at all. As I said, it only took me an hour. So in the grand scheme of things, I had a fantastic time. Right guys, I'm back from shopping in Leeds. Um, I had a really good experience to be honest, considering the Harvey Nichols there is a little bit more on the smaller side. They had a really good range of like niche fragrances, luxury designer fragrances. So overall, actually the experience was really nice. Um, the sales consultants there weren't too overbearing in any type of way. Sometimes as you guys know, if you do go fragrance shopping, the sales consultants can be a little bit overwhelming, especially when you are just trying to just sample different fragrances, explore new fragrances. But overall, I had a really great experience. Um, they had loads of brands there, um, including Maison Sia, Zerja, Maison Crivelli, Goldfield and Banks, Ella Kay, and the list just goes on forever. And obviously you have the luxury designer fragrances, namely Dior, Chanel, Tom Ford. Um, I actually only visited Chanel, oh, no, actually, I did visit Dior as well, but Chanel have a new fragrance called Comet, and I think it either launched last year or this year. And I did take a few notes just from the overall experience in terms of new fragrances, new releases, possibly fragrances that I haven't tried before and what my thoughts were on them. Um, unfortunately, I didn't actually buy anything. And this is what I wanted to say, actually. Even though you can see me going fragrance shopping or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to buy a fragrance every single time. And I want you guys to have that same experience. Just because you are going shopping, quote unquote shopping, you don't have to buy a fragrance. At the end of the day, it's a great opportunity for you to sample new fragrances or fragrances that you've never sampled before and you don't have to spend money every time that you go. I mean, even the travel there wasn't too expensive. So 
all in all, I just thought it was a fantastic experience. Sometimes it's better smelling in person rather than buying, you know, fragrance samples online, having to wait for them to come to your door. And you can maybe see different things that you wouldn't have tried before. So overall, I just wanted to say that because I think most people assume whenever they see vloggy, fragrance shopping kind of videos that I always buy something and I don't <laughs> most of the time it's only if something really blows me away that I will purchase it but anyway I just made a few notes on different fragrances that I tried so I'm just gonna look through them so the first fragrance that I tried, well, I wanted to try Apom from MFK. Originally it was Apom pour Femme and Apom pour Home. Um, but since then they've kind of merged the two being a unisex fragrance now, which is absolutely fine. But unfortunately it wasn't available in the Harvey Nichols that I visited, not just yet anyway. So then I scooted over to Chanel and I tried Comet, which is their new fragrance. Um, I've just written a few notes here. So it said, surprisingly good, very heavy on iris, powdery, buttery, and decadent. So I found it to be really beautiful. Um, out of all of the Chanel fragrances, it's probably one of my most favorite ones, um, alongside maybe Le Leon. Apart from that, I mean, it definitely has the Chanel DNA. It has almost that like super elegant, classy, Shepra, I know it's not a Shepra fragrance, but that like classical note structure type of quality to it. Um, you know, the iris makes it very powdery and lipsticky, but which, which sometimes smells a bit vintage, but to me it didn't smell vintage, it just smelled really powdery, decadent, um, very, very classy. So that was a really good success. And then I also tried a an exclusive from Goldfill and Banks for Harvey Nichols. It's called Mystic Bloom. And I'll just pop a picture of how it looks like here. Now, initially when I saw it, I was actually really excited because I like a lot of Goldfill and Banks fragrances, um, like Purple Suede, Sunset Hour, Southern Bloom, you name it. I love a lot of them. But this one not that I was disappointed because maybe that's the wrong word and the wrong terminology but when I sprayed it initially on my skin it did smell you know quite feminine uplifting and very decadent all at the same time and with a bit of spice but then towards the end I don't know whether it had maybe like immortel or some spices that just didn't agree with my skin it went a little bit harsh and not synthetic but a little bit more on the harsh side so it smelled a little bit more masculine on my skin so that one was not um it for me unfortunately and then I went to Matière Première I've tried a lot of their fragrances and um, my favorites are probably French Flower which is the tuberose one um obviously vanilla powder is insane Ensons um Suave is it Ensons I can't remember how it's pronounced but I tried Santal Astral which is meant to be um focusing on the note of sandalwood as you guys know, I'm a huge sandal sandalwood fan. I find sandalwood has like lots of different nuances, but particularly I like that smooth, heavy, rich quality to sandalwood. It almost smells like a little bit buttery. That's what I really enjoy. And honestly, it was still a really nice fragrance. I won't say it was a terrible fragrance because that's far from the truth. What I will say, and I just took a note of this, a little bit disappointing it's a nice sandalwood but slightly too harsh and synthetic smelling which is unusual because a lot of the Mattia Premier fragrances to me smell very natural um or not so much natural but the actual extraction processes really develop the notes to like another level like vanilla powder for example that stuff is Madagascan vanilla to a whole different level so it was a little bit disappointing but equally as I said it wasn't a bad fragrance it just smelled a little bit harsh so that's all then I went to try um um, Iris Malakan, which is the fragrance in my Iris video that a lot of you guys recommended for me to try. And I agree, it was really, really beautiful. It was a very soft, buttery type of Iris fragrance. Um, really reminded me of Mr. Thompson from Patalagans, kind of had that same type of vibe to it. So I really enjoyed the fragrance. I didn't actually buy it because I did have my eye on a couple of the other Maison Cravelli type of fragrances. Um, uh, Hibiscus Mahajad, you guys might be surprised, I'm not a huge fan of that fragrance in particular, neither am I a humongous fan of Oud Cadenza, but I really enjoy this Iris Malakan, and there was also another one which I'm trying to see, oh please let me say I 
found it. <laughs> I can't remember the name. Um, let me just have a little look. Three hours later. Oh, right. So this is the fragrance that I really enjoyed. It's called Lise Solberg from, again, from Maison Crovelli. Now it says here that it has carrot seeds, kins, wine leaves, dried fruit, iris, lily. Essentially, it's a whole concoction of different spices, um, seeds, fruits, um, some white florals in here as well. It's a very unusual fragrance, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very unique smelling, considering it's like a fruity, floral, woody type of fragrance. I, I thought it was fantastic. So that was a really good favorite of mine from Maison Crivelli. And I'm just looking through my notes. Oh, right. So then I visited Penhaligons, and the Penhaligons in Leeds is unreal. The wallpaper, you guys probably saw from this footage, it was just all over the walls. Incredible, incredible decorative features. Just everything about it gave it a pocketry, almost like mixing potions in the, in a strange way. Obviously, it's a you know an English brand, and it does go way back. Well, um, the person there who was the sales consultant was very helpful, um, very friendly. I I noticed a lot of the sales consultants and leads were just quite chill, easygoing, friendly, and that's kind of what you want, right? So I tried a Lula which I've been meaning to try for a long time. And I've set here a beautiful fragrance, similar DNA to Halfetti and Cairo, but with a strong fruity plummy opening and a little bit spicy. So overall, I didn't think I needed to buy the fragrance only because I have Cairo, which has that like smoky, woody, incense -y type of vibe, a little bit more on the spicy side. And that's kind of what Alula smells like. The only difference being is that it has like a quite a strong plum fruity type of accord. So if you're into that, then I think you'd really enjoy it. And they also have a new fragrance launching soon. Um, I don't know whether I'm actually allowed to say the name or not, but essentially they have a new fragrance coming out. Um, the only thing that I can say, it smells to me almost like a little bit like whiskey. It's very boozy. It's meant to be the brother or the cousin of Juniper Sling, which is like a gin and tonic type of um, inspired fragrance. So I thought it was a really fantastic um, new addition to, to Penhaligon, something a little bit different. I would say a little bit more masculine leaning as opposed to feminine with it smelling like whiskey. But overall, I had a great experience there. As I said, I didn't buy anything, but when the fragrance does launch, I'm hoping to maybe get like a 30 ml just to have in my collection. So yeah, that's it guys. As I said, it would be nice, short and sweet. Um, I just, you know, thought I would give you guys a little bit of feedback based on my shopping experience in Harvey Nicks and Penhaligons, although it was a little bit brief, and all of the, like, the new releases, the fragrances that I tried. And if you guys have not visited those stores, I would recommend that you do. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Bye guys.